Hello guys, welcome back to Take Dose and in this video we will see the minimum string length after removing substrings problem which is from lead code number 2696 and we will see two approaches to solve this and we will see the two pointer optimal approach at the end of the video. Now let's uh, read the problem statement. In this problem you are given a string S consisting only of uppercase English letters. You can apply some operations to this string where in one operation you can remove any occurrence of one of the substrings AB or CD from S. We need to return the minimum possible length of the resulting string that you can obtain and uh, note that the string concatenates after removing the substring and could produce new AB or CD uh, of the substrings. This is the imp important line by the way. Let's now look at an example for better understanding. Let's say that our string is CACDB. Our goal is to remove all the occurrences of substring AB and substring CD and this has to be done recursively. What do I mean by this? Let's say that in our given string uh, we have taken CACDB. You can see that this CD is actually matching with the substring to be removed. So when I remove this CD then our resulting string becomes CAB because A and B gets concatenated. Okay. Now after this AB is also one of the substring which needs to be removed so we remove AB as well and our final string is C and now in this string there is no such substring which we need to remove so the length of this substring will be our answer which is 1 okay. If you look at another example S then I have created another string ABF CACDB and in this case this pink portion is exactly the same as the previous example so if you recursively remove the items then ACDB will entirely get removed because when you remove this CD then A and B will uh, stitch together and then you can remove this AB as well so C will be the only remaining part and in this ABF you can remove this AB right and then F will be the remaining portion so there are only two uh, characters which are remaining in the final string and now you cannot remove any AB or CD so our answer is 2 which is the length of the resulting string okay so I think this is fairly easy to understand and now uh, if you want to remove something recursively some adjacent items recursively then you need to save the previous occurrences as well uh, if you are seeing D and then you need to uh, match it up with the previously recently seen character then you need to maintain it in some order let's say you have maintained a you have maintained c and now you are seeing a d so the previous item to the left which is available is c and so this gets removed and now the next character becomes b and you check the previously available item and you remove it this kind of use case uh, can be served by stack data structure so i think this is very intuitive to use uh, let's see another example a b f c a c d b and try to understand how we can recursively remove a b and c d uh, using stack if you take a stack initially it will be empty and let's name it as st as our stack now when i see an item when the stack is empty i can just push it as it is right now when i see an item b then i have to check the top of the stack if the top of the stack is already a and the current item is b then I just need to pop the top of the stack and just move to the next character. Okay, and that is what I will be doing. When you see an F and the stack is empty, let's push F into the stack. When you see a C and the stack is not empty, then you need to see if C can be the second character. No, the second character can only be B and D, right? But this is C, so no need to check it. You just push it into the stack. When you see an A, can this be a second character? No, only B and D, right? So you can just push A into the stack as well. When you see a C, can C be a second character? No, so just push it into the stack. When you see a D, can this be a second character? Yes, but then the previous character must be C. So check out the top of the stack. It is C, right? So you can just simply remove it and ignore this D, which means that C, D gets removed and then you go to B. Can B be the second character you see here? Yes, B can be second character. But then the previous character must be A. So check out the top of the stack. Okay, so the previously available character is A. So you can just remove this uh, top of the stack which is A and you can ignore this B. Once you end up by uh, doing the entire traversal, then the size of the stack which is 2 in this case will give you the answer. So the answer will be 2. Right, I think this is fairly easy to understand and I think very intuitive solution. So the time complexity will be order of n and the space complexity the same as order of n because we are taking a stack. 
now we can do a better approach and we can uh, actually do the entire algorithm in place and make the uh, space complexity o1 while the time complexity will still remain the same that can be done by using a two pointer in place approach okay so let me just give you a dry run this is a non intuitive solution so uh, if you are wondering about uh, how we can do it by two pointer then just look at the solution i think you will get some idea so let's take two pointers one pointer is the left pointer and another pointer is the right pointer the right pointer will be the read pointer and the left pointer will be the right pointer writer so this is uh, the name which i have taken in the code reader and writer okay after the dry run the technique will start making sense so let's see the entire dry run the first step is to overwrite the value at l whatever you are seeing by the reader so if you overwrite a with a it will still be the same right so you move the reader to the next value you move the writer to the next value now first we will do the overwriting overwrite the writer with the value that the reader is seeing so it will still remain to be b okay now if the writer is at an index greater than 0 if the writer is at index greater than 0 then we need to check if the previous item is uh, actually a like if we are seeing the current item as b then the previous item should be a if we are seeing the current item as d then the previous item should be b these are the only two cases right so if the currently seen item by the writer is let's say b which is true in this case then i will move the writer back simply and i will not do anything i am just moving it back saying that i will be starting to write again at index 0 so i am ignoring these two characters a and b the reader will keep on moving one step after another so when the reader is at 2 and the writer has come back to index 0 this means index 0 and 1 have now been ignored okay now let's see the next part in the next part again you are seeing f so the first step was to overwrite the reader value with to the writer position so i will overwrite this a with f okay now since the writer is at index 0 i will have no previous item so no need to do any kind of comparison just move to the next character this will also move to the next character c overwrite this b with c now if it is c the writer is at an index greater than 0 can this c be the end point of a substring no it cannot be only b and d are allowed so we will not do anything again move the reader and move the writer you see an a here so this will be overwritten this is step number 1 overwrite whatever you are seeing by the reader overwrite at the writer position now see if the writer is seeing the end point of a substring no a cannot be an end point only b and d can be end point so just move to the next point move to the next point now this c will be overwritten with c but then it is the same so i am not overwriting it now can c be the uh, end point no it cannot be the end point right so just keep on moving a okay now this a uh, will be overwritten by d okay whatever the reader is seeing the writer will overwrite now you check can d be an end point yes d can be an end point but the previous value must be c and yes the previous value is c so what we will do as a next step is you just move the writer back this means that this this character the fourth index and third index have now been ignored right because we are ready to write at index 3 that means c will get overwritten and d is ignored so c and d are both ignored by the way so when we move to b then we will overwrite this c with b okay now we have to check if the writer is at index greater than 0 yes so definitely we will have a previous item so can b be an end point of a substring yes but then the previous character must be a right and yes that is also true so i will move the writer back meaning i am ignoring the third index and i am also ready to write at index 2 okay and i will move the reader uh, to front and then we will end the entire string so when the writer is at position 2 this means that if next character comes in we will write at index 2 this means the two items to the left index 0 and 1 are actually uh, the valid characters and so if i have to tell you about uh, uh what will be the final string length it will be 2 only that means two characters on the left hand side and therefore the answer will be equals to 2 okay in this case it is fc you see in the previous uh run as well we were left with fc and we are left with the same thing now you will understand this better if you do it yourself using pen and paper on a notebook i think it will be uh, it will be more obvious if you practice it but this is a non intuitive approach as i said and since uh, we are doing all these operations on the same input string 
therefore the space complexity is o1 while the time complexity will still be same as on right so let's now look at both the codes if you are someone who is looking to prepare for top product based company within a limited time of just three months then we have brought for you both the dsa and the system design live interview training program the most important feature of this program is you get a filtered and condensed structured curriculum in-depth discussion of all the topics and my guarantee of your understanding one-on-one -on -one guidance with me and live weekend classes to know more about the training you can whatsapp us on this given number i will be sharing the python and java code in the github link so please look at it in the description section in the c plus plus code uh, for the stack we will take a stack and then uh, this is kind of iterating through all the characters if the stack is not empty that means already there is some character and if the top of the stack is a and the current character has an ascii value one greater than a that means it is b or the top of the stack is c and the current character has one ascii value greater that means it is d then we will pop it okay and we will not push the current item so that means a b or c d gets removed otherwise if that is not the case then we will push the item and at the end whatever is the stack size that will be uh, the final answer right now let's look at the two pointer approach now in the two pointer approach i will take a writer and the reader the reader will always uh, move forward one character after another okay and uh, th this is just the default right as i was saying the writer will always override the value that the reader is seeing and once that is done then we will check if the writer is greater than zero if that is true then we will check if the current writer is an end point of the substring that is b or d if that is also true either one of them then the previous item if they has one ascii value lower right uh, if you decrease one ascii value from b it will be a if you decrease one ascii value from d it will be c if that is true as well then i will decrement the writer ignoring the entire substring a b or c d otherwise if that is false then i will just move after overwriting and move to the next character by the way right next position so the reader will keep on moving forward as i said and at the end the writer index will tell us how many items are to the left of the writer which are actually into the final string and that is our answer right so i will be sharing the java as well as the python code at the end so i have commented them all you can go through the github link if you still have any doubt then please comment below and i'll try to help you as soon as possible like and share our video and subscribe to our channel in order to watch more of this programming video see you guys in the next video thank you